Hey guys, what's up? We have two topics for you. We will update you on Bruce Gary's cyclical transit model for Tabby Star and show you that even the best and brightest are having trouble predicting the light variations of this strange star. And our second topic is we have finally unified David Lane's old and new data sets and we'll show you several updated light curves of Tabby Star across different time scales. As a reminder, this is the cyclical transit model that Bruce Gary and his colleague came up with using this old Kepler data light curve. And they believe that the light variations of Tabby Star is a repeating process as shown in this diagram. So let's take a look at just one full cycle, which is highlighted in the red box. And let's expand it so that we can see it a little better. So they believe that we are now in a recovery phase just after the short-term dips occurred this spring and summer. And if this is truly a repeatable process, a cyclical process, then the flux of Tabby Star has to go from its low point this summer to a flux level that is 3.3% higher than the lowest point that occurred after the short-term dips. So let's see what's happening so far. So we will now take a look at the G-band data that Bruce Gary has taken during the beginning of the recovery phase. So these are the G-band measurements he has taken from October 2nd to November 4th, 2017. And this is the scatter plot of those same data points. If we take the fourth order polynomial trend line of his data, we get this curve. So in about a month's time, the flux of Tabby Star has brightened about 0.75% and now has backed off a little. They were predicting a 1.7% rise by now, but that never happened. And if you take a look at the trend line, it seems that we may have topped off and perhaps are headed down once again. So if this is truly a repeating light curve, then there is still a very long way to go back up to the full 3.3% brighter position on the old Kepler light curve. As a matter of fact, it needs to become another 2.5% brighter before the cycle can begin again, and yet it seems to be sputtering out and losing its momentum upwards. So guys, this is significant. The century-long dimming is real, no matter how folks try to explain it away. For our second topic, we have some good news in that we are now accurately able to combine David Lane's old and new data sets of Tabby Star. We determined that his new method resulted in the flux measurements being brighter by approximately 0 0.016 of a magnitude in the V band. Therefore, we shifted all of the old data points up by that amount and we now have a complete and consistent historical flux record of Tabby Star over more than two years. So these are the V-band data points over two years from October 27th of 2015 through October 31st of 2017. And these are those same data points as compared to our calculated accelerating long-term dimming curve. During this time frame, the flux of Tabby Star dropped approximately 4.25%, which is a lot deeper than the old Kepler data of 3.3%. And these are the data points during the recent brightening event. And if you collapse all these data points into a 20 data point simple moving average curve, you have this light curve, which shows it following the accelerating long-term dimming curve and then rising abruptly to approximately 1.1% above the lowest flux level. The portion of the curve highlighted in the red box is where we witness this divergence from the accelerating long-term dimming curve. And as you can see, it agrees with Bruce Gary's data in magnitude and also shows the brightening seems to be losing some steam. So this is David Lane's measurements taken in the V-band from September 23rd through October 31st. And this is a scatter plot of those same data points along with its 20 data points simple moving average. This shows the entire brightening event we showed in the previous chart, but it shows it in a little bit more detail. If we take the fourth order polynomial trend line of this data, we get this curve. So in about five weeks time, the flux of Tabby Star has brightened about 1.1% in the V-band and has now leveled off. 
This is very consistent with Bruce Gary's 0.75% rise in the G band over four weeks time frame. So guys, uh, we believe that this uh, brightening event is probably running out of steam and it might even be a short term event. But of course, more data is, is needed, of course. Um, but maybe it will now continue the long term trend downwards from this point on. Anyway, within a couple of weeks, Tabby Star will be so low on the horizon that most telescopes, besides David Lane's, will not be able to observe Tabby Star. But we got you covered on this channel, and we'll be updating you regularly. Well, guys, take care, and we will see you in our next video.